Today you're gonna to learn four impressively easy ways to remove backgrounds in Photoshop so that even if you have zero experience in the program, you're gonna feel like an absolute professional after using these techniques. Now some of these techniques are so simple that you literally only have to click one button, but there are some downsides to that, which is why we'll use some other tools for different situations. So by the end of this, you'll have a super solid understanding of removing backgrounds without all the complex mumbo jumbo that other tutorials like to include. So let's get into Photoshop and get started. Hello friend, my name is Brendan from BeWillCreative.com and let's start things off nice and easy with a simple button to remove your backgrounds. Now to do this, there's two different options and I'm gonna show you both here. The first is by selecting your layer here in the layers panel by clicking on it. You'll then wanna make sure that the layer is unlocked. So if you see this little lock icon here, just click it to unlock it. Now you need to go and access your properties panel, which you can find here in the sidebar, but if you don't see it, you can go up here to window and down here to properties and that will reveal the panel for you. Now within the properties panel, you'll see this quick actions option and there's a remove background or select subject button. Now, if you want to just create a selection around your subject to do some spot adjustments, for example, you could select the select subject button. However, since we want to remove the background today, we're gonna to click on the remove background button. Photoshop will automatically select your subject and remove your background by applying it onto what's known as a layer mask, which is basically a way of hiding certain areas in your photo without getting too complicated. Anything that is black is 100% transparent and anything that is white is 100% visible. As you can see here, our subject is white on the layer mask and therefore he's visible on the photo. Now there's one other way of doing this without the properties panel, which is by selecting any of your main selection tools here. So the object selection tool, the quick selection or the magic wand tool, all under the keyboard shortcut W. If you have any of these tools selected, here in the options bar, you'll see a button that says select subject. So if I go and just delete this layer mask, for example, I could go to select subject and that will create another active selection of my subject without removing the background. Now to remove the background, you just have to add a layer mask by clicking on the layer mask icon down here and now your work is done. So this gives you the same results as before with some other options if you don't see the properties panel. Now you might be thinking, why doesn't this video just stop here? Because this clearly is the easiest way of doing things and you would be right, but it does have its limitations, which is where the other tools for selecting subjects and removing backgrounds in Photoshop come into play. In some cases, select subject might not be able to make an accurate selection of what you want in your photo, or in some cases, Photoshop might not even see your subject in an image and then things just all go downhill from there, which is why we then can go and use one of these more manual selection methods that we'll talk about next. In this next example, we're gonna talk about something called the magic wand tool. And the magic wand tool is really good at taking a color and turning that into a selection. Let me show you how it works here. The magic wand tool can be accessed here in the toolbar, just by going to the magic wand tool, or you can press W on your keyboard. Now in the options bar, there's a few different settings to be aware of, and I go into them more in depth in a video that I'll leave up in the corner right now if you'd like to learn more, but I'm just gonna give you the basic overview so that you can just get started with removing your backgrounds. The sample size is basically the amount of color that the tool will turn into a selection when you click. So for example, with my sample set to point sample here, that means when I click on my canvas, it's going to select one pixel and that one color of that single pixel. So that means it's going to select all of the similar blues of the exact area that I just clicked. Now in this type of example where there's a ton of the same color, it's not gonna really make a big difference. However, when you're going and using this tool against small edges, that's where the sample size comes into play. So if you have a large area such as the sky, in this case, you could use pretty much any sample size and it doesn't really matter. However, if you're going and trying to sample a very specific color in a small area of your photo, I would suggest using point sample or three by three average. Now for this example, I'll be setting my sample size to three by three average, and that should be good enough for this photo. Now our next setting is the tolerance, which is by default set to 32. You can pretty much just leave this untouched, but by increasing that tolerance value, Photoshop will go ahead and include more colors within a similar color range. It won't be as picky when you're selecting. Now as for these little boxes to check, the two that are most important is the anti-alias and contiguous. Now the anti-alias option will just make sure that you have a nice smooth selection and it won't look blocky after you cut it out. So make sure that that is checked on as you see here. Now contiguous, let me show you an example of how this works. If I go and click on an area of this cloud, for example, you can see how my selection represented by those marching ants only goes around my cloud. It doesn't go anywhere else in the photo. Now if I deselect that, uncheck contiguous and click in the same area again, 
Notice how now the other cloud is selected, some areas in the building are selected as well, and the selection has gone all over the photo instead. So what contiguous does when enabled is it only allows you to select pixels that are actually touching. So that's why when contiguous was checked on, I wasn't able to select anything in the building because these pixels are completely separated. When you're trying to remove a background, especially without selecting your subject, leaving contiguous checked on is going to be super helpful. Now, finally, you have the option to sample all layers, but since we're just removing the background from one photo, it doesn't really apply here. You just need to make sure your layer is clicked and highlighted in the layers panel. Now with that all good to go, let's go and remove this sky here. So I'm going to click once to make my first selection. Now I'm going to hold the shift key and notice that little plus icon appears beside my cursor. I can continue to click around my photo. You can even click and drag and it will select more areas as you go. We're just going to continue to click until all of the marching ants are gone and we have a clean selection of the building. Now in this case, you can see all these little specks are getting selected, which we want to include in the background removal. So I'm going to actually increase my sample size. Let's go 51 by 51. And I'm going to just click over those areas. And now that problem is solved. So that's where your sample size can really help you in certain situations such as this one. Now with that selection active, I can just click on the layer mask icon. And obviously this is the opposite of what we want. So with that layer mask selected, just press command or control and I to invert that. And now we have successfully removed that background or the sky in this case, without affecting anything in the main subject, AKA our building. Now the magic wand tool is all great and dandy, but it is very limiting because lots of photos have multiple colors. It's not just a single sky as you see here. So that brings us into our next method, which is the object selection tool. This tool just makes life a little bit easier to tell Photoshop exactly what you want to select. So to access the object selection tool, just click on the toolbar here and go to the object selection tool. It's going to be hidden within the quick selection or the magic wand tools there. Now at the most basic level, the way this tool works is it allows you to define a specific area using either a lasso or a marquee selection. And then Photoshop will try to find any edges within that defined area to create a selection. Now to give you an example here, my mode is set to lasso, which means I can just click and drag around wherever I want. So I'll go and define a selection area like this. Now Photoshop will take everything inside of that selection area and try to turn that into a selection. As you can see here, it's selected sort of around her neck, selected the cloud in the background and those things. Now the next way to define an area is by setting the mode to rectangle. And this is a little bit easier for just simple objects because you just click and drag out to basically create a marquee selection. Then Photoshop will try to find something within that defined area once again to select whatever's inside. So with that in mind, you can start to see how you can select your entire subject. You just have to define an area around them. Now in a more recent update to this tool, they actually have some AI built into it so that you can literally just click on the subject. Now the reason that my subject goes blue when I go over her is because the object finder here is enabled. If I disable this, you won't see any of that. So when the object finder is enabled, it's just a helpful way to easily select multiple objects in your photo, which is great for selective adjustments, but it doesn't always do the greatest job for just background removals. You can give it a try if you'd like. Anyways, if you wanted to use the object finder, you can just hover over your subject and click like so. Photoshop will then turn that into a selection. But if you wanna get more specific with it, you can set your mode to either rectangle or lasso, and then you can go and click and drag around your subject. You want to try to go as close to the edges as possible. Again, I'm using the lasso selection method here. So that's why I have this like cursor that I'm drawing around rather than just a big rectangle. Now with that area defined, Photoshop will snap to my subject's edges. And now we can go and click on the layer mask icon like so. Now at this point, you can see that there are some areas in her hair that aren't looking quite right. So we need to touch those up using select and mask. Now this is a little bit less beginner, but I want to make sure that you actually get a good result with this. So we're going to be going off the rails a bit. To access select the mask, double click on the layer mask that you just created, and it will open up this new window here. Now, the first thing that we can do is click on the refine hair button in the options bar. That will basically try to remove all the background from your hair, but you often get a weird result as you see here. So to fix that, what we can do is click on our quick selection tool here. And with it set to the plus option, we can go and paint over the areas that we'd like to reveal once again like so because it kind of got rid of her shirt in places and parts of her hair. Now with the areas that you wanted to keep back in place, you can go and click on the refine edge brush and then with smart radius enabled here, you can go and paint over the hair in your photo and it will just try to remove some of the background 
from that area. Now, oftentimes you end up with this like ghosting, haloing thing that happens. So the last thing you can do is click on the decontaminate colors option right here. And that will just add a little bit of color and take the fade away from those flyaways. And that's pretty much the best you can do with some of these basic adjustment tools against a complicated background like this. So I'm gonna click OK and that's going to be a good enough job for what we can do here. Now there's obviously ways to make this hair actually look realistic again, but it does take a lot more effort and it's kind of beyond the scope of this tutorial. But if you want me to make a tutorial about that, leave a comment down below, letting me know that you'd like to know how to cut out hair in a more complicated way, and then we can make that tutorial for another day. Anyways, with the help of the object selection tool and the selected mask workspace, you can get a pretty good selection even with some complicated edges such as hair. Now in our final method, we're gonna combine some of the techniques that we learned previously in this tutorial, along with a new technique that's really good for removing basic backgrounds with a simple color, for example. In this case, we have a white background and our subject has a very complicated hair because lots of curls, lots to select, and most selection methods will have a hard time with this. So I'm gonna show you one of my favorite little hidden kind of selection tools that is awesome for dealing with complicated selections such as this one. And the reason it works is because we're on a simple background such as this. This selection method is called select color range and you can access it by clicking on your layer and going to select and down here to color range. Now in this color range window, you want the selection option to be chosen and you want the selection preview to be set to none so that you have the exact same view that I have here. Now the way this works is you can sample colors in your photo and it will then turn it into a selection. And remember what I talked about earlier in the video with the layer masks and the black being transparent Transparent and the white being visible, well, that's basically what you're looking at here. In this case, the background is completely white, meaning it'll be selected, while the subject is black, meaning it'll be deselected. Now with this tool active, you'll have the eyedropper tool automatically enabled, and you can then go and click anywhere in your photo to change the sample area. Now obviously, just by clicking in one spot, you're not gonna get a perfect selection, which means you need to sample multiple areas. So by holding the shift key, notice I have that little plus icon now beside my cursor, I can just click and drag around my background here, sampling all of those white colors. I'm just continuing to hold shift and clicking and dragging over a bunch of different areas in my background to make sure that everything is nicely selected. Now, once you feel like your selection is as good as possible, we can go to our fuzziness slider. And if we increase that, it'll basically just include more things inside of our selection. So I'm going to just increase that fuzziness a little bit and notice how her shirt becomes a little bit more white. That's okay, we're gonna refine that in just a moment. So with all of that looking good, we're gonna have a really nice selection of her hair. As you can see here, you can see all those curls are selected because they're all black. Now at this point, because our background is white, AKA 100% visible, and our subject is black, AKA 100% transparent, we need to invert this selection. So just click the invert option and now click okay. Now we have a selection of our subject and I can go and add a layer mask to remove that background. But you can see that there are some areas that are transparent, such as in her shirt, her teeth, and things like that. So we can use our first method to help refine this really easily by going and selecting any of your quick selection tools here. You can then just press select subject in the options bar. That will create a selection of your subject. And now with that layer mask selected, you can access the brush tool by pressing B, set your foreground color to white, and then just go and paint over the areas of your subject that you want to reveal again. And what this does is it allows you to paint on your subject without spilling over the edges, so you don't need to be careful at all. Now, the reason that this was so helpful for this example is because we could use the select color range option to get that really clean selection around the curly hair. And then I could use the automation of select subject to go and touch up the rest of the selection without having to get it absolutely perfect across the entire photo in the select color range workspace. Now, with all that good to go, I'll press Command or Control D to deselect that, and now our background is successfully removed. Now this is all truly just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to removing backgrounds and creating selections in Photoshop. And I talk about other techniques where you can create more precise and accurate selections in this video right here. There I share a few other methods to remove backgrounds in a way that is a little bit more complicated, but you often get a much cleaner result. This is the type of stuff that actual professional Photoshop users are doing, and it's kind of beyond on the beginner level of things, but if you'd like to challenge yourself, it's right there if you're interested. Anyways, my name's Brendan from BeWellCreative.com and I will catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then.